I'm going to be using SOLIDWORKS 2020 CAM and CAMWORKS 2020 DEMO. Uh, we're going to see if there's any major differences between them. So uh, main, main thing is that um, the SOLIDWORKS CAM uh, basic version is going to, um, to be, uh, say, an add-in with the, uh, the SOLIDWORKS subscription. So uh, when we come up to the little gear for our options and come down to add-ins, uh, since I have both installed, I'm going to say it's probably not a good idea to check both of these active at the same time, so pick one. Uh, but we'll, um, we'll take a look at um, uh, each one and uh, take a, a comparison for... Um, uh, for the the program, so SolidWorks Cam 2020 is powered by CamWorks, and then CamWorks, you know, is CamWorks. So it's telling us the versions. So you need to know where to to locate those. It takes a little longer for SolidWorks to load if you have uh, the uh, the the program active and on startup. So I typically load Cam packages just when. I'm ready to uh, to work with. You might also see that there is HSM Works on the other laptop. Um, you may notice that there's the Master Cam Solids. So uh, there's always kind of a, a mix of cam programs based on uh, what kind of lectures I'm doing, what kind of um, uh, projects I'm working on. So the um, I'm going to go ahead and leave those off for now. The tutorials that we're using f for the um, for the lectures and we'll give you some uh, some reference is the under SOLIDWORKS and this is uh, C drive program files uh, SOLIDWORKS Corp uh, SOLIDWORKS CAM language English manuals and we're going to be starting with the technology database so if you want to use that for reference um, you can uh, work with that one if you're working strictly with CAMWORKS you're going to stay with CAMWORKS then pretty much the same thing, C drive, program files, cam works, and then all the way down to manuals and the technology database tutorial. So one of the things that I've uh, noticed is um, the projects that are included with cam works have been kind of fine-tuned to where they work really well. Real life doesn't quite work that well so it's good to see what it's uh, supposed to do and how you can uh, do the automatic feature recognition uh, but for the most part expect to get maybe 50 60 sometimes 70 percent of your program written for you or, or uh, features recognized for you but you're always going to do a little bit of adjustment a little few tweaks along the way so if you watched any of the previous master cam HSM videos, one of the things I like to start with is the preferences, the settings, and the technology database has a lot of horsepower inside of CamWorks, and it's a little intimidating to uh, to get started with it. So if we pull that in, I'll go ahead and um, scrunch this up a little bit, and fit the width. And so we're going to see the same type of interface. Prior to 2018 or 2019, uh, I let my um, uh, commercial version of CamWorks lapse in 2017, so um, I have not used it as much as I have some of the other programs. Um, but prior to, uh, to 2018, this was in the Microsoft Access database, and it had a different format and was a little bit... Um, less intuitive. I think this uh, this interface is more intuitive. And so let's jump back over to the so you can find the bookmarks again. I close those. Um, let's start off with creating a machine and we'll do the um, uh, the tool crib and then as we get a little further into it we'll um, go into further into the logic and setting up um, uh, setting up feature recognition. All right, so technology database, um, creating a mill machine. You would do the same thing for a lathe or dual spindle, um, you know, and even the um, the wire EDM. The um, technology 
uh, database 2 is the tools and tool library and then it goes to tool cribs so we'll try to, to touch on each of those uh, those points so either from uh, from SolidWorks with cam active or down on the uh, the start menu we'll go to uh, to camworks probably not able to uh, to see that one Actually, I think I had it, yeah. So when I go into the technology database, you can go down to CamWorks on the start menu and find it, or all the way to um, uh, the SolidWorks uh, 2020 folder and look for SolidWorks Cam, and then the, launch the technology database application. All right, so since I have both of them running, I'm not exactly sure which one I'm working on here. So when I look at this, uh, under the settings, it's going to show me the CamWorks data, CamWorks 2020 TechDB. And that is the technology database that I'm currently modifying. Uh, as far as I know, and we'll have to verify this when I get one of them running, <laughs> we will actually launch the software, uh, the TechDBs are the same. So if I wanted to share them, I could put a copy of the TechDB over in my Dropbox folder and that way um, they should be pulling off of the same information if I were to switch back and forth because it's powered by my SOLIDWORKS cam, cam is powered by Sol, uh, CamWorks and then we have full CamWorks they are um, interchangeable for the uh, for the most part I haven't found anything that's um, uh, created a lot of problems so uh, like I said um, SQL Lite and SQL Server for the um, uh, this technology database uh, application or MS access for the kind of the legacy. I kind of like the new interface and it's working well so I'm going to leave the settings alone. And when we go to set up a, a mill we have fourth, fifth axis and if I launch click on the uh, the mill inch by default I don't really want to modify that by default so I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of it and then now we're looking at the copy and I can go ahead and give this a name. So if I go mill and I'm going to set this up for Haas VF3. All right, so one of the things I want to be aware of is I have, um, let's say we have a, um, uh, an SS machine. So uh, VF3 with a 7500 RPM spindle. Um, higher capability machine, say a VF2 SS with a 12,000 or 15,000 RPM spindle. And then a VF, uh, an older VFO that um, uh, has a 10,000 RPM spindle. I want to set up each of those machines and I'd want to program to the highest RPM machine. If I change machines or I output to a different machine or select that it would um, um, be able to jump between those capabilities, I would want my feeds and speeds to be able to downsize with that machine, but they wouldn't necessarily go up. I don't know how better to explain that right now. So uh, we're going to take the highest capability machine program to that, and then as we make adjustments, we will um, uh, find those speeds and feeds accordingly. All right, so. Um, We'll just give it a VF3. Uh, this is 7500 RPM. And when we're going through the rest of it, we should be able to pick that up. So default post processor, I'm going to switch over to a mill. How's VF3? If you have a custom post, then we would point to that one. Doesn't necessarily have to be in the location, but that CamWorks data. Let's see if I can uh, find that real quick. And we go over to the CamWorks data, CamWorks 2020 under the post. Well, there's the TechBDB folder since we're here. But under the post, you're going to see the list. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll rename this to post-oem. And then I'll create a folder like my posts or, you know, or just posts again so that it um, is able to narrow it down to just the items that I'm using. All right, uh, I'll put subroutines for mill operations, no. For feature patterns, no. Basically, that's going to switch it over to 
uh, the macros, if you have limited uh, capabilities and really complicated parts, it will reduce the program size by quite a bit. But um, for now, we're going to let it put out however much code that it wants. Uh, I'll, I'll put multiple parts by tool, by feature, by part. So we want the tool to run through all of the multiple parts and then change tools, come back and do all of the parts again. If we go by feature, then that tool would run through all of those features or do all of the uh, feature selections, or it would run one complete part, jump over, one, one, run one complete part, and that's including all of its tool changes. So by tool, at least to, uh, to start, and then we can see what it, um, what it does um, later on. So kind of jumped over machine duty, medium duty, default strategies. If we create a custom strategy, then we'll come back and revisit that one. So our specifications for this machine is a 20 horsepower um, average index uh, time indexing. No, I'm not really doing fourth axis. Feed rates, rapid rates are for uh, estimates. Um, table travel is 40 by 20 by 25. And uh, display toolpath at G coordinates, code coordinates, display cutter comp on first move. Should be okay. The turret is a sequential or a preload. All right, so we'll have to, to see what that does. If we do the preload, that should be the side mount and tool crib. By default, I'm probably going to pick empty since I haven't created one yet. We may, um, choice is always with the umbrella style if we're going to. Um, just uh, load tool sets for every project. With the side mounts, it, there's a, a real advantage to loading up a, uh, a tool library, a tool crib, and having the first um, eight, nine tools live inside of the machine and only come out when they need to be inspected, changed, inserts, indexed, that kind of thing. And with it being bi-directional, it'll go both ways. Number of tools are 20, so we have tool stations 20, 30, 20, 25. Actually, I think that is a 25. Uh, let's see, is it going to let me go to 25? Well, we'll see where that one comes uh, comes up again. And um, tool crib uses substations. No, nope. tool crib priority. So find uh, tools that are in the already in the machine or in the tool crib, rather than adding new ones. Or we can use tool crib tools only. So it's going to look through the tech DB and and try to find tools that are closest to those settings. So we'll leave that one off for now because I don't mind seeing what uh, tools it's selecting. Not really worried about overlapping times. It will affect the um, the estimate a little bit. Nope, still not letting me do that one. <laughs> All right, so spindle taper cap 40. We'll go over to the spindle. Um, 10,000, or we said 7,500. And uh, acceleration times, if you are trying to really fine tune the um, uh, the time estimate. No indexing, no rotation, rotary axis. Okay, so we can kind of bypass some of that and go ahead and save. All right, so we've created a machine, and this is now the default machine, so we'll save one more time. There may be a few things I come back and change, but for the most part, that gets my machine established.